This is a signatory single cask bottling of Edredau, and it's quite possibly the most beautiful whisky I've ever laid eyes on. Today, we're going to use this crimson beauty as the backdrop for a chat about chill filtration and the problems with collecting whisky. was, until 2005, known as the smallest distillery in Scotland. What we have today is not one of their core range, but a single cask bottling by Signatory, who in addition to being independent bottlers for a variety of whiskies, are also the current owners of the distillery. One thing I love about these more bespoke bottlings is the variety of character you can be presented with. There is more focus on provenance and traceability compared to a core expression. This particular bottling is part of the signatory Unchill Filtered collection, meaning the esters and oils are left intact in the whisky. This can cause the whisky to turn cloudy if stored in cooler conditions, and to the untrained eye may appear to be an undesirable trait, but to those in the know, it is a hallmark of an excellent liquid. I, for one, am of two minds to whether chill filtration is the pinnacle of sins committed against Scotch whisky. However, it would appear to me that any extraction of essence of the whisky, or any other liquid for that matter, must in some way or other impact the resultant flavour of the product. It's an ongoing debate, and for my own personal tastes, if I want a whisky badly enough, chill filtration isn't going to be enough on its own to put me off. But it is something that makes me hesitate. Another big tick for this bottle is display of natural colour in all its beauty. The hue on this whisky is the sort of thing I've not seen outside of dusty display cabinets of vintage Avondale bottlings of scotch dating from the 50s and 60s. Whiskies this dark are rare in the modern market and virtually unheard of for unadulterated with caramel colouring. I was very attracted to this bottle the moment I saw it and I'm very glad to have it as part of my collection at home. The bottle is drawn from a single cask, listed on the label as cask number 43. What this makes it is the 365th bottle of a limited run and as such, highly collectible. In 10 years time, this could likely fetch a fair bit of interest on what I paid. In 20, even more so. I have to admit, for a moment, I was very tempted to store the bottle, but I decided not to, and I shall tell you for why. If a beautiful man took me back to his place, threw me on his bed and started unbuckling my trousers, I'm not going to pull him off me and start painting a watercolour of him instead. In the same respect, whisky is made for the living. It's made to be drank, it's meant to be enjoyed, it's made to be shared with good friends and help form memories you'll take with you to the grave. It wasn't made to gather dust on a shelf, or hide under the floorboards. I've nothing against collecting whisky. I would quite like to retire to Sorrento myself. But if it ever gets in the way of you enjoying whisky, well, that's just not a life worth living. Back to the whisky itself. This dark dram is bottled at 46%, a respectable strength. It was distilled on the 27th of February 2009 and bottled 3,765 days later on the 20th of June 2019. The whisky is unlike anything I've tried before. There is a heavy sherry influence of dried fruits, sultanas, angelica and dark chocolate, but there is a floral calmness to the malt that takes me by surprise. The character is inviting, warm and gentle. Most sherry bombs go for the Rockstar Espresso approach to in-your-face flavour explosions. This one is more of a mug of tea on a rainy day, comforting and lovable, without demanding too much of your attention. It knows it's good, and it knows you love it. Move on.